good day and welcome back. So today in um, this section four of chapter one, we're going to be setting up the Go Tools and Plugin for Linux. And I'm going to be working on Ubuntu. I can't cover every possible Linux distribution, but if you're in Linux, chances are you wouldn't be using Linux unless you, um, you know, were brave enough to strike out on your own and explore and try new things. So it's just basic guide for some people. But other than that, I trust that if you're using Linux, you're going to know how to find the correct um, instruction for your platform. So where, for example, I might use Debian, the DPKG package in Ubuntu, because Ubuntu is a Debian-based distribution, you might have to use something like RPM if you're in a Red Hat-based one, like Fedora or CentOS or Red Hat, or whatever it is for SUS and those other distributions. So without much further ado, let me try and run through the general Linux setup pretty quickly so we can move on. All right, tools you're going to need are um, going to be Go, Git, and the ID Visual Studio Editor. That's the one I'm recommending you use. Of course, you can use any editor you want, but if you're new and you don't have an editor or anything like that, this is a good one to start with. It's really pretty, it's pretty, pretty good. All right, so this is where you're going to get all that stuff. So on this slide, I'm showing where you can download um, all those tools and save it and then we can worry about configuring them later. Um, the most important thing to do once you have like git install is to, inst um, to create a git config file with your username and email that way when you try to commit something, git knows who you are. Um, the other thing gonna be for Go, it requires a project directory. Well, not quite a project directory. Uh, it's called a Go, direct um, Go path. And within that Go path directory, um, so the go path environmental variable must point to this go path directory. And so there's any directory you create and say, I want this to be my go path directory. I want this to be my go path. And within that directory, it's going to have bin, package, and source. Okay. To understand the purpose of those three directory, let's look at this um, diagram here. And we'll work from bottom up. So imagine that oh, you have several projects, um, one called go application projects one called hello, and that's a directory with all the files representing your hello project, and then another project called awesome, and another set of directory, and that's another directory with the files, go files, appropriate for project awesome. And so those are two different, two different directory, and they're gonna sit side by side as subdirectory within your project directory, right? Your go project directory. I see my call that my projects. Now, um, you might work with other people or um, frequently, actually download packages for use in Hello World or Project Awesome that other people have written. And so you actually can get the source for those projects. And so it only makes sense that those would sit parallel to your project directory, and within those person project directory would be the same multiple directory structure. So you can imagine Bob here um, is gonna provide you either application or a package, and so within Bob's directory would be some other directory which I'm not showing. So your project directory and Bob's project directory are parallel and within your project directory are the different projects that you work on. But regardless of who many people you collaborate with, um, you, you might all share in the same repository. And so you might all have your project hosted, for example, at GitHub. And so that's where it might make sense to say, you know what, um, let's have a directory to represent all the projects that I have at, um, at GitHub and other people I collaborate with from GitHub. And similarly, you might have another um, repository like for work. And again, under that directory would be you know, a bunch of people and you can also have projects over there too that, you know, are on that, those hosted in those repositories. And you can imagine multiple repositories. So that's the general idea of how um, you know, Go likes to organize things. So you can imagine for your work repository, you have a colleague, Susan, and she also has several projects, okay? Now, above your different repositories where you may have projects, you don't have to have projects in all of them, it doesn't matter. Uh, you might want to collaborate with Susan or get some source from Susan, and you don't have a project directory over there, so you don't have to. Um, all these still represent the source code, whether it's for an application or a package. It still represents the source code. So those are under the source directory. Um, once they get compiled and installed, um, they're going to go into the binary package, um, binary bin directory if they're executable programs that you can run. Or if they're packages that you can just reuse, then they go into the package directory. 
So that bin and package directory represent different type of binaries. Bin is where you have executable programs that just runs, and then the package directory represents um, packages that get compiled and installed that you can reuse. And then all three of these directories, like I said before, source, bin, and package, are under your Golang directory. And this is what your environmental variable points to, that um, Golang directory. I, I know it's a lot, um, but this is how um, Go like organizing its software. Okay, let me just do this installation and show you exactly how it's done. But so you don't waste time, I'm gonna speed this up a bit. Uh, you can always slow it down. But generally what I'm gonna do here is just go download, um, go to the directory, I don't have to download for Git. If I go to the Git SCM uh, webpage, and I click on download, it actually shows me the different commands for the different distributions. And so I'm on Ubuntu, so for example, I copy that command. I need to run this as root or sudo. So I'm gonna do sudo and then run it. I already have git install, but it doesn't matter for you, it just will install it if it's not there already. So now I'm gonna install Golang um, tools. So I visit the website, download the package, the tar ball here. And uh, if you look, it's going to tell you how to extract it and where to extract it to. But it also tells you that these commands usually require root or sudo privilege. So I'm going to um, check in. Um, I'm not root, so I'm going to move this to my temp directory. And then I'm going to use the sudo command so that sudo can pick it up from temp. And I'm going to run it. And once it's run and installed, next thing I need to do is actually set it up in my environmental variables so I can execute it. So I'm gonna go set that in my system profile directory. And of course for my system to pick it up, I'm gonna reboot my system so these changes can be picked up. Same thing as before, I'm gonna go to the Visual Studio website and download Visual Studio code um, from my platform. And since I'm using Ubuntu and it's Debian based, I'm gonna download the Debian package. If you're not using a Debian based system, then you just download the tarball and install it. See there are a number of plugins that are available. I want them there was the Go one. We'll install that later. So I'm going to use dpkg and install this. And after this, no, uh, then I'll reboot my system after I have all this installed because then I want to pick up those changes I set for Go to put Go on my path across the system. And now that I have everything installed, I'll reboot my system to pick up those changes I mentioned. And then I want to verify that I can run go from the command line. And once I can do that, then I want to create that directory structure that I mentioned before, which is, you know, the LPC um, go programming language directory. And that's going to be my go path. And then within there, I'm going to create the source directory, a GitHub directory. Please do get up, create a github.com directory, even if you don't have a GitHub account. And then a directory for myself, for my projects, and then this LO project directory. Um, just to get started. In order to go back to the Go installation page, you'd see it tell you that to test your installation, you need to create this Go directory and set the path. And so I'm going to do that. I, we already created the entire directory path, but now I'm going to set it. I'm using ZSH shell, so I'm going to set it to my ZSH RC file. Again, if you're in Linux, you know this already. If you're using bash, you didn't change your shell, it's going to be bash that bash that RC or bash the profile, uh, profile. So you have to know which one depending on your platform. So at the bottom of my ZSHRC, I'm gonna set the go path equals to my own that directory. And then I'm in export, export the bin directory for my go path. So, so that when I install go programs, I could just run them from my command line. So again, this is standard Unix stuff if you're using Unix slash Linux. Set up um, the go plugin inside of Visual Studio Code. So for this, we're going to cd to our hello project directory and we're going to pretend that we want to actually start up the code editor not pretend well we're going to start the code editor here and so it start up in this directory and it's blank and so if we create a main.go file and we try to open it that is telling that we need to install some tools and i can install those by clicking the install all tool i'm going to speed up the installation of these tools but i just want to show you that these tools are being installed into the directory in that um, bin directory that we created inside of our go path directory. Um, and if you look in the source directory, you can actually see the source also for these tools along with even the package directory, you see some changes. So once this is finished, now it's time for us to go ahead and try our IDE out. So we can 
start writing our simple Hello World Go program. But before we do that, um, since we installed the plugin, I like exiting the editor and restarting it just to pick up any changes that I might need. So I just tend to do that when I install a new plugin or anything. So let's restart it. And now we have our main that Go file is blank. Let's start typing. So every Go program needs um, a package. Every file needs to be in a package. So for our, our application, you need to at least have a main package. That's where everything starts. So I'm going to do package main, main. And then I'm going to install the FMT package, which comes as part of the language. And that FMT package just means the format, you know, basic format uh, methods package. So you can provide your number of methods for formatting things and reading and writing to the standard out and standard error. So we're going to do that. We're going to just say FMT that print line. Um, hello world and so we're going to do go run at the command line main that go and run that and you'll see it does exactly what we expect and if we look at the code nothing is different than what we have in the source there in the um, IDE so right now your IDE is set to uh, probably don't have any set into auto save so what we want to do is file preference and you can set it to auto save after delay or once you lose focus of the IDE I've changed mine to um, auto save after four seconds. And because of the Go plugin and some of the defaults there, um, it automatically um, reformat my code so I don't have to worry about formatting. And it actually updates my import. So when I started typing this program, I typed import FMT package. But now I'm going to use the time package. And notice I don't import it first. But once I finish typing here and my um, file saves after four seconds of me not typing, um, you're going to see it's going to automatically Im do the import for me. See, I didn't have to type that. So if you like that sort of thing, um, you can leave it. It's on by default once you save your file. If you don't like it, you can turn it off by looking in the preference and then scrolling down. Now, how does this change our application? So when we run, help type hello and r run the program previously, um, it just printed out hello world. But if we were to do go run now, you'll see it's always going to say hello world. It's going to wait five seconds and then it's going to say hello again from go. So that's just a simple use of the hello world program. Uh, if you want to get the main application there um, executable, you can do go build. Or if you want to actually have an installable application that you can run, you can just do go install. And then give you the hello world that you can just... Um, type on the command line because remember we have our bin directory um, set to our path and so you can go when you type go install in the your project directory it builds it and put it in the bin directory now if I remove these lines um, you're going to see after four seconds it's again going to update my code and change the import and that's fine now one of the things you have is a git plugin so you can actually go and um, initialize your git repository which I click there and try to commit um, these changes on this file. Now if you do that, it's going to complain that you haven't set up Git properly. And that's because Git doesn't know who you are or your email address to, when it makes comments to say um, so and so person made these changes. So what you want to do is if you go to a directory and you actually you can create a git config file in your home directory or you can have git do it for you. And for git to do it for you, you just have to run um, the git um, config command. So once I have this done, now I can commit the changes either from the command line or from within um, the Visual Studio Code IDE. Um, if you do from command line, Visual Studio Code IDE refreshes and pick up that um, the changes were made. Now, what about creating another project? So if I want to create another project, that's pretty easy. I just go to a directory I want to create a project. So here in my directory of projects, I'm going to create a new directory for Project Awesome. And then I'm going to start the Visual Studio Code Editor in this directory, which is going to be empty. And now I can again start, you know, creating Go Fat programs, important packages, and so on. And the whole cycle continues. So the exact same thing that we did before, just kind of repeat, rinse and repeat every time you want to go to a Go project. So I hope this illustrates just how we, um, we get everything going and we're ready to start coding. We still don't have the debugger set up, but we'll do that later. But at least now you can write code and test it. So thank you for your time and look forward to seeing you in the next video. 
um, enjoy and play with this. Of course, if you run into issues, please let me know and have fun. Let's do go. All right. Bye.